Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Crossing Paths Television Ministry, and I've got a special guest today. This man I've known for so many years now. He's a great man of God. The most important thing is he wants to share what Jesus Christ is doing in his life. My name is Don Reed Sr. I'm the founder of Crossing Paths Television Ministry. We are on approximately 200 TV stations or cable companies, and maybe now, in fact, now nationwide on 35 different states. So please pray for us so we can bring you local people giving their testimonies of what Jesus Christ has done in their life. And this man here is a perfect example. He's a pastor. He has a job. He works on everything else just to keep his church going. He's not afraid to admit it. But most of all, he loves the Lord. Welcome today to Crossing Paths. Tim Don? Klein. How you doing, brother? <laughs> Good to be back. Thank you for preaching in my church last week. You were a blessing. People loved you. Church is still open after you left. <laughs> Thank you. Nobody fell, nobody got hurt, but I no, know, right? Nobody got hurt. <laughs> hey, uh, what's, what's the name of your church? Solid Rock Ministry. Solid Rock, and where's it located at? 303 Pearson Street, downtown Newcastle. Downtown Newcastle, Pennsylvania, yes. right? Yeah, and you know, before you get into your testimonies, you know, I see the people down there, just ordinary people like you and I, dressed up like you today or maybe whatever, right? Ordinary people. Yeah. Hardworking people. And and somehow you, uh, you know, Tim, you had a, a vision years ago. First, I want to say you're married. Uh, what's your wife's name? Susan. Susan, okay. Well, I want to say hello to Susan and your two children. Three kids. Three kids. Three children. Okay, yeah. so they're growing up on the... You know, they used to sit on my knee here, you know that, and uh, had a lot of time, good time. And I do your tax return, right? Yep. And I do it by face. You keep me out of jail. <laughs> keep me out of jail. Oh, you say, so some of these tax returns are well, whatever. <laughs> hey, uh, what happened to you growing up? Where'd you grow up on the east side, Newcastle? Akron, Ohio. Okay, tell me about it. Akron, Ohio. Grew up in a church. Got born again when I was eight. Eight years old. Eight years old. Uh, got a purpose and destiny in my life. I uh, came through some crisis and some traumas with abusive situations. At home, you mean? At uh, Not at home, but through relatives. Okay. And uh, uh, brought some addictive behaviors into my life. Uh, went through junior high, high school, played a lot of football, basketball. For who? Uh, Green High, south, uh, uh, north of Canton, Ohio, school. Went on to uh, play some ball at Kent State. And then uh, God dropped the big bomb to leave all, everything and go to Bible school. Now, wait a minute now. Did you have any childhood experience with your Christianity? Or you say eight years old. What, eight what years old. Was your mother and dad taking you to church or yep, what? Went to church every Sunday, every Wednesday night. First Assembly of God, Akron, Ohio. Grew up there, a youth group, the whole, the whole bag of chips. But, you know, my wife always said when we got married, you're uh, Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde coming home. And you know what? The, the, the crisis and the traumas uh, set us up to become addicted to things in life. And, uh, you know, I drank a... a a pot of Jack Daniels and a shot of coffee to get my day going for many, many years. And Was it high school or college? High school, college. Uh, How about hard drugs? No, never touched a hard drug. Stayed away from my, my best friends OD'd uh, on acid in uh, eighth grade. And uh, I, I watched what drugs did to their life. And uh, I, I just... Never had a desire for drugs. You know, the addictive behaviors from childhood led me down the road to a lot of drinking and uh, pornography, that type of a lifestyle. Sure. Well, I think a lot of kids go through that and they, they get, like you say, addictive. You know, kids, kids grow up, they, a lot of people get such a guilty conscience out there that they do things like this. But, you know, we know one thing we'll talk about later on that God can deliver you from that, right? It's, it's interesting, absolutely. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, God's got a plan, a purpose for all of our lives. And our, our addiction doesn't change that. Uh, you know, we struggle, we, we, we go on. God calls many, many into ministry today. Many people have left because of their 
addictive behaviors. Many have gotten fired from their churches or their churches taken away from them. Uh, I think we live in a day and age where people want us to be perfect. And, uh, you know, uh, the trauma, the soul ties, the strongholds that come into our life, uh, if God don't change us and, and, and set us free from those strongholds, then you go into ministry with addictive behaviors. And that's where a lot of people don't want to talk about that. You know, there's a lot of leaders, there's a lot of pastors that have been uh, abused. They've gone through traumatic experiences in their life. And uh, like me, we hide. We hide from that stuff. We, we pretend it doesn't exist. And one day, you know, you get caught. One day, you know, people will take your church. They'll fire you. They'll tell you to step down. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of men and women sitting at home today that God's got a call on their life still. Yeah, because Just because they failed through addiction or whatever you want to call it, pornography or whatever, you know, they've, they're cast out, they're killed or wounded, if you want to call it that way sometime, right? Absolutely. And there's a lot of pastors out there that I, I counsel with. There's two or three of them now that they asked me if I'd mentor them. You know, I said, hey, you're mentoring me as I mentor you because I've got problems. We all got problems, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And have you found out now, being a pastor now, I want to go back to when you said that, when was this time that this came to you finally when you, you, you had to, you made the commitment at eight years old the best that you could, right? Mm-hmm. Then you progressed through this addiction and whatever it is, right? When was it finally you finally found the Lord, that we, shall we say, that you made your commitment that you end up as a pastor? How old I was, uh, well, I was 20 years old. I was playing ball at Kent State. All right. And uh, one of the youth pastors talked me into driving uh, a group of uh, kids from the school or from the church to college days. Now, were you turning, going to church at all? Anything, right? Yeah, you, I was always going to church. Are you still going to church, yeah. right? Going to church, uh, I love God. I, I loved uh, the church. But I think, if, I think what most people don't understand is they don't understand how the addict thinks. They don't understand the emotions and what people go through. Uh, I, I, the addiction and that world, we don't think like everybody else thinks all the time. We don't operate. You know, there's been traumas. There's been breaches done. There's been Ephesians where Paul talks about our fight is against spiritual powers, principalities. You know, I love the word in John. It says that the, the devil comes as a thief and a robber to kill and to destroy our life. And even in ministry, the devil's trying to destroy our leaders in this country. He's trying to destroy the, the pastors. He's trying to destroy the church. And if he can find a weakness in our life, that's what he'll try to work on. And, uh, you know, sometimes we got weaknesses. Absolutely. Uh, from, from, from a crisis and a trauma. And we just got to learn how to let God, His Holy Spirit, heal us, restore us. New Testament Bible says that God is a God that restores. And uh, I, I restore houses. I've done about 30 of them. And, you know, when we're done with them, they look better than they did uh, when they were brand new. And our lives are the same way. You know, there's a lot of people that have quit God because they feel God don't love them no more. But you know, Tim, that brings up a good point that there's pastors out there that are taking, you were taking an extra, working extra to continue in the ministry, right? Yes. And there's nothing wrong with that because some churches just don't have the fun, smaller ones, right? Right. And these pastors get very discouraged and I want to encourage them out there. I'm, I'm here myself and you probably know a lot of people too that because of a pastor, Methodist pastor, that uh, put up with me, listened to me, and talked to me, and mentored me mm-hmm. until I finally. But you know, some plant, some God, God, some plant, some water, and God gives the increase, right? Yes. And you and I talked about. I watched Billy Graham. I watched Earl Roberts. I watched uh, a, a, a guy up in Cleveland. I forget. The, or uh, we, we mentioned Rex Humbert. Rex Humbert. You know, and full gospel businessmen. Yep. Okay. Yep. All of these ministries now. So I want to encourage them pastors out there. You may only have a church of 50 or 25 or 10. Don't quit, right? Absolutely. And that's what your church is, right? Right. 
And and when you take, tell me, give me an illustration, of people that you take off the streets up there. Well, we work with, uh, we t we deal. Our, our church is in Crack Alley. There's six crack houses around our church, and uh, most of the people we reach out to have addictive backgrounds, drug backgrounds, criminal backgrounds, sexual, sexual backgrounds, pornography, eating disorders, uh, uh, gambling problems. I mean. Those are the kind of people we reach out to, and uh, we enjoy doing it. We don't have the biggest church on the block, but within our church, we've got some real miracles that God has done in people's lives to restore them, to heal them, to forgive them, and now they've got a purpose and destiny in their life, in their family, in the church, and God's using them. But you don't you don't house them. You don't. They... We don't house them no more. Uh, you were doing that we for a while. We were doing that for a while, but we don't. We've been done with that mm, five years ago. All right. So so, I think the message today would be to me, as far as you are concerned, right, that we don't need to kick somebody while they're down and out, right? Absolutely. You know, and some people they'll take your license away because you maybe got a divorce or something. I, I'm not saying that it's right to be divorced and this and that, I'm trying to say. There's always two sides to every story out there, yep. story out there right? Yep. And and I just believe that when the scripture, I, I got Jeremiah 33, 3, it says here, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know not. And you didn't know you'd be sitting here on TV, right? Right. And we crossed paths, right? And now you'll be able to help other pastors, right? Mm -hmm. Now you have a, what kind of business do you run just to, to make, so you can help support the church? You have a couple of businesses? We have a pest control business we run. And where's that at? That's in Newcastle, right. and we got one in Jupiter, Florida. And then uh, I have a painting business. I'm a painting contractor for 40 years. So we do a lot of commercial painting, industrial painting, and we do pest control. Are you going to set up other businesses like in the mosquito business? Is that, is we that can, your, if you people can? are interested in So in if that, somebody's out there interested in that particular... Absolutely. You can set them up, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. Of course, everybody likes Florida, so... <laughs> who don't? <laughs> yeah, who doesn't like Florida, right? Yeah. I was down there, I told you, but remember there was a pastor down in Florida, a wonderful pastor, and one morning he, uh, he woke up and a man stood up in his church there and said that he was leaving. And I, I was like a 500 church and 250 people left him, you know, and here the man had been planning on doing this and didn't have enough guts to go out and start his own church. You know, that that isn't uh, from God when you rob a church to start another one. If you want to start one, I say go somewhere and start it. But don't, you know, when you get five or 10 or 20 uh, tithers, mm -hmm. that broke that man's heart. In and, right. and Florida, and he almost lost his marriage and everything, so I was talking to him and too, so forth. You've seen that in a lot of your pastors? Uh, I see it every, every day, every week. You know what? If God calls you, then do what God's asked you to do. It, God, if he calls you by faith, you know, I, I, I say who in their right mind would want to go into full-time ministry? And if God what, calls you, if God you're in your right you. mind. If not... Maybe you're going in it for the wrong reasons, and time will tell. Uh, but I see guys, you know, stealing sheep and backstabbing and just to get ahead in this, in this country. And, you know, one day we all have to answer to God for what we do and what we don't do and what we, you know, what we bring God into the picture. God's not into a lot of things that we do. We, we claim that he is, yeah. but does it line up with the word of God? I, I always tell our church, I said, who comes in here and speaks, make sure it lines up with the Word of God. Just don't believe everything somebody tells you. Mm. So, What about, like, uh, have you ever been in any prisons? Have you ever speak in any prisons? Or yep, been work? there in the last 40 years. In and out of locally here? And, uh, uh, when I was in New York, we went upstate in New York and done some prison ministry. Uh, I don't do a lot of that uh, in Newcastle. We have some people on staff that go into the jail ministries and, and talk, but I, I don't do that. I was in a bar yesterday talking to some people. Uh, I like to go into that area uh, more because there's where people are drowning uh, themselves 
uh, with whatever they've gone through. And, you know, the, the, the guys in the clubs, the bars, the nightclubs, that's more where I like to go. And uh, look for the ones who are ready to kill themselves. Look for the ones who's lost hope. Look for the ones that feel like God has turned his back on them. And God really hasn't turned his back on, on any of us. You know, God loves us. He sent his son, Jesus. It, it doesn't matter what maybe your church has told you. I want to tell you that John 3, 16 and 17, God so loved the world, mm -hmm. he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And, and the best part of that is God didn't come into the world to condemn us, but to love us and to give us life, mm. and a happy life. And wherever you're at today, you know, mm. if, if you're sitting there with a 44 to your head, Jesus loves you. If you want to commit suicide, give Jesus a chance. He'll change your life forever if you give him a chance. I understand, too, that you were talking before that you grew up in a home, but your dad... You could have went into some real money or business opportunities. Tell me a little bit about that, and yet you chose the ministry. Well, my dad was an insurance agent, real estate agent, tax man like yourself. Uh, when I was 19, God said, go to Bible school. And I dropped everything. I graduated high school. I played a, a semester of baseball at Kent, and I dropped everything and followed him. And I've been following him for 40 years. So, uh, you know, that's where I think with some people, uh, God calls us. And uh, if you'll follow his voice by faith, it's been a long journey for me. It's been many ups and, and downs. And, you know, many things have gone on in my life. But I, I know one thing. Jesus has never left me. Through the good, through the bad through being a, a Dr. Jekyll and a Mr. Hyde sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, uh, through addictive behaviors. Uh, God has never left my side. God has never asked me to lead the ministry. And those are the very people that I help in our church. Helps. So you knew what you were doing all this time was this addictive behavior, Absolutely. Right? Because the Word of God at the eight, year, eight years old or whatever, right? And people try to say, well, I didn't know what I'm doing. I did it. You know, I knew what I was I doing. I knew what I was doing every minute of the day. There is, same with alcoholism or, or adultery or sexual perversion or whatever, whatever you want to call it, right? Mm -hmm. I, I see that many of pastors today that are so busy out there winning souls, too, that their whole family is falling apart. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, we have a, a church. I'm associate pastor at my church, you know, and you are, too. You have a Bible study at your church? Yes. There's some churches with a thousand people that don't even have a Bible study mm -hmm. during the week. There's some, some at 300. They don't even have a Bible study. Well, yeah. the pastor should go out there and start one himself. If I don't care if it's one or two people, right? right? Because, you know, you can't just live on one day. You don't eat one day food, right? right? right. You've got to eat the scriptures. Scriptures are seven days a week, and you just like you eat food every day of the week, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I find out many, in my case, it's, uh, your pastors really mean well, some of them. But they've been torn down, beaten, yep. and they finally give it up, and then the church comes around and throws them out. Yeah. You found it with your experience? Absolutely. I think we got to realize what Ephesians says, that our fight is not against flesh and blood. There's a lot of uh, principalities. There's a lot of demonic spirits. There's, you know, when God comes into a person's life, he changes it. But for the addict, there's a lot of strongholds. There's a lot of soul ties. There's a lot of generational curses. I mean, there's a lot of mess there that you got to go back and, and help. Somebody needs to help you work through those things in your life. And that's, that's kind of like a thing in, in the church I grew up with. You never heard about stronghold, soul ties, generational curses. Uh, and I think that's where the breach, you know, the crack, when, when trauma comes in our life, there's a breach. There's a crack in, in our natural mind. And the demonic comes in there and builds a stronghold. You know, I always say soul ties. What would your wife cook you three nights ago for dinner? Well, we went to Morgan's. 
<laughs> What'd you do two we, nights? We ago? ain't out of go. <laughs> no. You know, you don't she remember. cooks a good meal. My wife. I she cooks a good meal, but you don't remember three. What, what, you know, if we, I'd ask people, "What you cook five yeah. days ago?" Nobody knows. I, I don't remember. But that. if I ask you, what is your first encounter you had, intimate sexual encounter? Yes. The face pops up, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. That's a soul tie. Yeah. And the devil uses stuff like yeah. that in our addictions and, and, and growing up. And he puts strongholds in our life. And we need help to work through that yeah. stuff. And, and you know, there's another, there's another thing, too, that a lot of people don't. I, I want the audience to hear this, too. But I want to bring in habits. You know, people have habits, right? Now, I know some people, I'm not for smoking or drinking or some of the things like that. But sometimes you can have a habit, okay? Uh, like Paul had a thorn in his face, right? Romans, remember? And he says, and he, he tried to get rid of it. He asked three times, right? And the Lord said, now, a habit will never, a thorn will never send you to hell. I don't believe it. It'll just keep you humble. Now, that's my teaching, okay? Right. And I mean, I might have a thought, you know, and, and, and that thought isn't right, you know? Now, that's not, a, not doing anything from that, right? But we cannot, we cannot quit. The more you try to quit something, the tougher it is. You have to turn it over to the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. So when you have the addiction that you had there, was that a gradual and then come to a point where you just was able to stop and you know, all of a sudden? It's a process. A process. It's a process. process right? People, places, and things. you got to have a good support group around you. Yeah. You have to uh, have people that will understand what you're going through, that prays with you every day, every week. you got to get into the Word of God. And, and let the Holy Spirit just start changing your mind. Mm -hmm. Romans 12, 1 and 2, we have to renew our mind mm -hmm. by the Word of God and have people around you that understand what you're going through. Mm -hmm. They won't judge you. They won't, uh, you know, want you to quit what you're doing, but they'll help. And you're going to make a thousand and one mistakes along the journey. There was an alcoholic one time. I, I counsel a lot of these people. A the guy said to me, he says, uh, my thorn in flesh is I uh, get drunk. I said, no, mm. you better read Romans, okay? The Bible says a thorn will never cause you to go to hell. It'll keep you humble. So he was trying to say that was his escapism, mm. was getting drunk every once in a while. Well, if you read in Romans, it says, it says adultery, drunkenness, and so forth, right? Even for effeminate and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So people think that they can find a way out without the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I right? Right. And you, know, and, you know, Tim, too, I think there's somebody out there probably today that just like you are, they still may be have a, and they're born again, and they could be spirit-filled. Mm -hmm. And they have this, uh, uh, and, uh, what do you want to, I don't care what you call it, a, a, a thorn in the flesh or whatever it is, God can handle it, right? Yep. Yeah. You, when you become addictive to pornography, to alcoholism, to sexual perversion, to what everything, right? You don't have, we don't have that instant McDonald Christianity, which a lot of people think, right? right? And the next day, you you still yeah. got problems BC, before Christ, and AC after Christ. And you know, our time's running out here, and I appreciate you coming down here today because the pastor's got a, there's a second chance, I call it right there, third chance. But people will turn away from you, you lose your friends, but I want to tell you something. There's one friend. God called Abraham his friend way Amen. back in Genesis, right? He said on, on uh, you hit that one, on Romans 12, 1, I beseech you, brothers, by the mercy of a God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, right? Holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Yes. And be not, what, conformed to this world, but, but be ye transformed by the removing of your mind that you may prove what is good yeah. and acceptable word of God, right? Amen. And how do you do it? you got to pick up the Bible, yep. the Word of God. Well, you say, Don, I, uh, I disagree with you. That's good. You can disagree. But if you got the Holy Spirit and I got the Holy Spirit, eventually it's going to come down to one answer. Amen. You know, no religion on this ministry here, but a relationship. Amen. And if you're out there today and you want to meet Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, it's just like I say, water going over Niagara Falls. You can take a bushel basket, all your sins, put it in there, go over Niagara Falls, and goes out to sea of forgetfulness, right? Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Tomorrow comes, right? you got another bushel basket, right? Maybe not as many. On there, out to sea of forgetfulness, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's done. Yeah. But the devil will keep reminding you, including some of your friends, which are not yeah. the devil, but they will say, why are you still doing it? Why are you still doing that, right? Well, why are you still gossiping out there? Why are you doing the things that you're causing other people to stumble? We have a telephone number. Before I tell you about that, today is the day of salvation for you out there. 
I'm not trying to say that there's a special prayer. Just ask the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ to come into your heart. Say, I'm a sinner. When, when you say, I'm a sinner, the Holy Spirit is right on the scene. And say, Lord, Amen. forgive me for my sins. Cleanse my yes, mind. Sir. Cleanse my heart. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, died on the cross for me personally, rose from the grave, ascended to heaven. And Lord, who would like this? Write my name, the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm born again today, this day. Salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Telephone number, 724-981-7777, 1-855-981-9777. God loves you. Call that number. We will be there to answer the phone. We love you, and God bless you. When you support Crossing Paths, you're helping to release the power of testimony. There's many people who know about God, but they don't know Him personally. They don't know His true nature, and they don't know His heart. The stories that we bring you each week testify to the power of God and to the love of God. Through these testimonies, people all over the country are getting to know the Lord and developing a hunger to know Him more. When that relationship becomes alive, it's clear to see that no person or no situation is too far gone for the power of God. I like to share with people that it's very important to know who you are in Christ because that day, if that was me laying there, I know that I would have missed uh, heaven. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him, referring to the devil, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. God is still the same. He's still this, God's word is still the same. They say times are changing. Times are changing, but God is still the same. <laughs> it's, it's a no brainer for me. You don't have to have a doctor degree to know oh. that God is good. He loves sinners. He just does not like to sin. When you partner with Crossing Pass and sow a seed into this ministry, you are helping us get the power of the testimony and the gospel over the airwaves. This will help people understand better who God is and connect them to the plans He has for them. Please call us today and support this vision.